Um, thank you. all um, So my name is Neil Gampa. Uh, I'm from the Fedora project. I'm here to talk about Fedora KDE. Um, so let's get on with it. And a little bit before we kind of get into Fedora KDE itself, I want to talk a little bit about myself just to give you an idea of who I am. So uh, I kind of call myself a professional technologist for whatever the hell that means. Um, but I'm a contributor and a developer in Fedora, Magia, OpenSUSE, and Open Mandriva Linux distributions. Uh, I am a member of the Fedora Engineering Steering Committee. So that is the committee that runs, that essentially is the final um, arbiter of all of the major technical changes that occur in Fedora releases. Um, I'm also obviously a member of the Fedora KD SIG. Hello. Otherwise, I wouldn't be talking to you about it. Um, and I'm a contributor to package management software, specifically RPM, DNF, and related projects, systems management, software management. I live a lot in the plumbing layers most of the time. Um, and for my day job, I'm a DevOps engineer at Datto Incorporated, who's a business recovery disaster, business continuity disaster recovery company based in Norwalk, Connecticut. Um, they don't really matter too much from, from the Fedora KDE perspective, but you know, that's where I work. Um, and you can reach me generally via Twitter. Um, there's my Twitter handle on screen. Um, so now to the interesting stuff, Fedora KDE. So Fedora KDE spin is a curated collection of software that demonstrates the breadth and quality of the KDE ecosystem. So the whole point of this is that we're trying to show um, a Fedora, a KDE experience on Fedora that is um, relatively close to what KDE as a project aims for the Plasma desktop to look like. Um, we retain as many of the upstream defaults as, uh, as possible. Um, there are some minor tweaks here and there. We look at paper cuts and stuff like that. Um, for the most part, there's some minor branding and usability tweaks. We use Mozilla Firefox as our default browser. This is something that all the Fedora desktop editions do. Um, and we use Firewall D for our firewall solution, and it's configured, and we have the applet and stuff like that, as well as SE Linux as our mandatory access control system for security. Um, we ship as a live media ISO for x86 systems, and that's available from kde.fedoraproject.org. And we ship um, disk images for our ARM systems, and that's a, at the uh, arm.fedoraproject.org website. Um, we don't yet currently. Um, only because I didn't actually realize we didn't have this and we're going to, hopefully, um, I brought it up for discussion, um, having ARM ARCH64, which is 64-bit ARM um, for systems like Pinebook Pro and so on to operate in full 64-bit mode. That's hopefully going to come uh, real soon now. Technically, it should just work. It's just a matter of like getting a switch flipped. Um, so right now we have mostly 32-bit ARM, but you could of course do a 64-bit ARM from scratch and be able to, um, get Fedora KDE that way as well, because we do build all the packages for all of our architectures. So even power, even mainframes, if you're so inclined, um, it's available for everything. Uh, although I would be really interested in the use case for KDE on a mainframe, that'd be fun. Um, right, so that's Fedora KDE spin itself. And let's talk a bit about the Fedora KDE SIG. So the Fedora KDE SIG started originally as an a little outside project um, called KDE on Red Hat. It was started by Rex Dieter in 2003. Um, many of you may know about uh, may know of Rex Dieter. He actually gave a talk several years ago, um, uh, talking about the Fedora KDE spin when it was first introduced back uh, in 2000. I think in um, what was it Academy 2009 ish? I think um, I. Forgive me if I got the year wrong, but I know it was a very long time ago. Um, so KD on Red Hat started through him. And like uh, when the Fedora project started up and then started incorporating um, all of these external Red Hat oriented um, or Red Hat ecosystem projects into the main Fedora project, um, KD on Red Hat merged into the Fedora project um, at around that time. Um, the merge of Fedora Core and Extras uh, brought that into uh, you know, in, into fo into focus as the KDE SIG, and we were one of the first SIGs to be created. Um, and in Fedora 7, along with the Core Extras merge, as it's been called, uh, we also introduced live CD technology. And so Fedora GNOME, or the Fedora desktop, as well as the Fedora KDE spins were the first two to actually do this. 
Uh, and so we rolled out with KDE 3.5 in Fedora 7 in 2007. And we introduced KDE 4 in, a year later with Fedora 9. Um, so today, you know, we produce a KDE spin based on Plasma 5. We switched to Plasma 5 with Fedora 22 in 2015. Some special purpose variants, so these are called Fedora Labs um, in our ecosystem, are based on KDE. Formerly, we had a scientific spin that was based on it. Um, today, I believe the, the most notable one is Fedora Jam. Um, we are in this mid-transition to a more active project management structure. Um, we are starting to use a Packer IO project um, for doing project tracking. And we are in the process of uh, scheduling regular meetings in IRC. Um, one thing that Fedora KD does differently from virtually all the other variants in, in Fedora is that we update the desktop environment software. So Plasma, KD, KF5, um, Qt, all of those get updated um, continuously throughout the latest Fedora release. So we wind up saying like, you know, maybe it'll uh, a release launches with um, 514 or 515, um, and it'll get 516 and 517 and 518 uh, and 519. Um, and then when the next Fedora release comes out, then that chain starts forward. So we kind of maintain updated fresh plasma, um, essentially as the KDE project releases it, we pull it into Fedora and push it out. And so like right now, Fedora 32 is on 518. It definitely didn't launch with 518. It will get 519 as soon as we're done packaging it up and pushing it out. Um, and 520 will also be released um, for Fedora 32 along with Fedora 33. Uh, I didn't mention it in here, but we've also taken over um, providing KDE Plasma for um, Red Hat Enterprise Linux and CentOS custom, uh, users. Those folks uh, get it through uh, Fedora Extra Packages for Enterprise Linux, or EPL, as it's called for short. Um, and so for Cent RHEL 8 and CentOS 8 users, they get, uh, they get the Plasma 5 experience. So next. And I guess I'll uh, show a little bit of my desktop here because who doesn't love seeing stuff? Uh, share my screen, select window. There we go. So, you know, this is... Uh, Obviously, kind of boring. This is um, this is SDDM at the lock screen, and so here's my desktop environment. So this is Fedora 32 with Plasma 518 uh, five, uh, and as I said earlier, we've got Firefox here. This actually isn't exactly bone stock Fedora 32. I'm actually testing some uh, user experience changes that have been suggested um, to the SIG and trying to see how things work. But you can see we've got applications and stuff. And this is otherwise pretty much stock. We've got our firewall there, DNF Dragora, um, and also system stuff here, system settings and discover. And yeah, so we've got pretty much everything you would expect to see um, in the in the environment. Uh, you know, it's nothing too exciting. Uh, and just to kind of show, you know, DNF, uh, ref DNF refresh. Wow. Uh, upgrade. Ah, that's why. I'm clearly not doing, there we go. That this is this is what I get for uh, you know not being so uh, um, what is it having all my marbles or whatever when it comes to this. So like we got updates for new Firefox, Podman, MariaDB, and stuff. Like it's it's a pretty um, simple and usable experience in, in my view. Uh, and since that's and also fairly quick um, and also Delta RPMs, which is cool. Uh, I could talk on and on about like the kind of basic stuff. Uh, so it's uh, it should be almost done there. Transaction test and right. That will be 
that'll take a little bit of time actually. Um, while that is happening, also showing. I've also got some of the things that are kind of coming down the pipeline, which, uh, oh, right, mount. Uh, so like my file systems on ButterFS and so on, and I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute, but you know, there you go. It's it's pretty much, uh, you know, aside from, aside from, you know, it being Fedora, it's a pretty straight KDE experience. Uh, stop sharing my screen. And so we're back to this. Um, and, you know, there we go. So as for what we're doing for the future, um, we're looking at uh, ButterFS by default, as I showed, I've already got it running in my machine. I've been using it for five years now, and I've been pretty happy about that. Um, so uh, Fedora Workstation and Fedora KDE are driving the change for all the desktop variants of Fedora to switch to ButterFS. Um, we are also planning on switching to Plasma Wayland by default for the next Fedora release. Um, I actually submitted the change proposal uh, yesterday, so we'll see it. It'll probably make news um, when it gets picked up onto the interwebs uh, later. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna pull that off, and I think that dovetails quite nicely to from Alish's talk just earlier, where he was talking about doing all this work to make uh, you know Plasma Wayland uh, awesome. And I mean, frankly, one of my laptops runs uh, Plasma with Wayland, and it works mostly fine, aside from one minor thing, which is weird uh, and still trying to figure out. Everything generally works. Um, we're also looking at paper cuts in the Fedora KD experience. We've got some issues filed from some folks and we're looking at those. Um, but the other interesting thing that we're looking at is providing an immutable OS variant called Fedora Kinoite. So some people may be aware that um, in the past there was a, so not in the past, but like a few releases ago, um, Fedora made waves with this Fedora Silver Blue variant, which is an immutable OS variant shipping the GNOME desktop. Um, when that effort came, came to pass and we started having this, there was some work by uh, members of our community to uh, actually move to offering a version of this uh, system with KDE. And we have uh, the stuff needed to kind of make that. And like Silverblue, we'd be using RPM OS tree for the base OS. And we'd start providing um, flat packs of KDE applications and such um, for applications uh, and ship those uh, into it and have the um, Fedora toolbox environment to give you a more mutable shell to run things like developer tools, uh, install command line utilities and stuff in a containerized environment. And all this effort is being tracked in the Fedora KDE SIG um, Packer project issue tracker. So if you've got ideas, feel free to like jump in there and, and help us out. Um, so, you know, the, the big thing is that we are trying very hard to offer a solid experience we're revitalizing our um, our our uh, communications and our, our active development kind of stuff, and uh, we've got our project issue tracker, and we've have our mailing list and our IRC channel. I'm looking at setting up a matrix room and things like that. Um, if you want to come and help us, uh, you know, come join us. Uh, we're we'd be happy to to have more contributors onto this. Uh, and we have cookies and we give them out pretty freely. Um, so yeah, uh, any questions from the group? Uh, unfortunately, I, I timed this for 30 minutes and which means I, I made it about half as long as I normally did to leave room for questions and stuff. That seems yeah. to have possibly been a mistake, I don't know. <laughs> Thanks a lot for the talk. That was uh, great to uh, see so much enthusiasm. I think we have one or two questions in the notes. Um, so yeah, first question. Do you think that if this spin or other Fedora spins become more popular in the future, uh, would it be possible to support PowerPC64LE? Of course. 
the, I think the only reason we haven't done it is because nobody's ever asked for it. Uh, we build all the packages for for power, for System Z, for ARM six, uh, AR64, for 32-bit ARM. Every architecture that Fedora supports, we have Plasma software for it. So if you'd like us to offer um, a PowerPC uh, 64 LE, please just you know, file an issue on the SIG and let us know. And uh, we can figure out getting that um, getting that made. Like it's it's not that hard to add another another um, ISO to be produced for for those people. And I know that the Talos 2 workstation is starting to become a favorite of some folks. So I'm totally happy to see Fedora KDE on those environment on those systems. Cool. Uh, yeah, second question. If I remember correctly, Plasma is not provided as optional desktop environment when installing Fedora. Any plan on giving Plasma some love and proposing it by default as an alternative to GNOME? So I think this comes with a little bit of a misunderstanding compared to how um, I, I feel like this is probably something inspired by like how OpenSUSE and uh, Debian may actually be presenting the desktops. Um, in Fedora, the primary deliverable for desktops is uh, through live media images. Um, and there we have the workstation edition, which ships GNOME. Um, I am actually talking to uh, the website's team about the idea of having Fedora KDE also be presented on the at the same level as the workstation edition. Um, some of the stats that Matthew Miller shared with us was indicated that despite the second level marketing, like we're on, we're like below the top level fold, we are the most popular variant of Fedora outside of GNOME um, and the most popular variant outside of the three editions uh, combined it was co uh, compared to all the other ones combined. So we're popular enough that it is worth, um, you know, giving some stronger promotion and we do, and we are a release blocking variant. Like Fedora does not make a release unless uh, both GNOME and KDE are fully functional and working. So it, it matters to us quite a lot. So that's something that I would love to see. And I think we're hopefully going to see as we look at redesigning the Fedora websites and the marketing material as the rebranding for the, the new Fedora logo and all that stuff starts coming down the pipeline, which yes, that's a thing. Maybe it'll happen as soon as everything is figured out with trademarks and stuff. Nice. So uh, we have, yeah, even four more questions. That's great. Sure. Uh, so would it be possible to sync Fedora KDE releases with Plasma releases? No. Plasma releases too frequently. So the problem with it is that Plasma releases somewhere between three to four months. Um, I, I don't actually remember the exact cadence, but it's, it's more frequently than Fedora does. We do try to line up Fedora releases to the latest available Plasma release. And our, our compromise here is that we actually push updated releases of Plasma as they release to the latest Fedora release. So for example, most likely um, five, uh, either 5.19 or 5.20, hopefully 5.20 will actually be in Fedora 33. Um, when 5.21 comes out, we will also push it to Fedora 33. Um, that is, we try to make the latest Plasma desktop available to the latest Fedora stable release um, so that, you know, this slight out of sync nature doesn't hurt us too badly. Yeah. All right. Uh, then, uh, oh, people like being on the bleeding edge. Uh, do you think it's possible to have a repo with KDE packages from Git like OpenSUSE Krypton? Yeah, actually, yes. I think this would be... Um, a possibility. So um, it actually might even be easier than how it's done in OpenSUSE, which is a super convoluted process the last time I looked. Um, because Fedora's packaging is actually built in Git repos. So we have src.fedoraproject.org, which is where all of the packaging lives. And those are all Git repos. It'd be relatively straightforward to build some automation so that we can trivially take those packaging spec files um, shimmy the latest Git commits or Git snapshots or whatever we want to do, and like put that together, make a nightly, weekly, monthly something composed that produces um, a a, um, a beta image or something with the latest KDE stuff. Um, we also already do 
Um, I think it's monthly respins of Fedora KD. So like whenever we do a rebase of KD, that gets included in a monthly respin. Or is it weekly? I forget what the cadence is. But we do respins of all the all the media for all the variants on a fairly regular basis. And so updates get uh, included through that as well. Nice. OK, and uh, two more questions at the moment. Is there a plan to offer Fedora KDE to hardware providers? Um, I don't see. We don't currently have any plans per se, but that's also because I don't know what how we would do it. Not that like I'm not interested, or the or the sig may not be interested in it, but I I, I literally do not know what that process would be to work with a hardware uh, with a with an IHV who makes computers to do that sort of thing. If someone if, if someone wants to ship Fedora KDE on a laptop, like. You know, maybe the Slimbook folks want to do it for like another KDE community version or um, or Tuxedo or whatever. Like, I really don't have a problem with that. And I think the rest of us would be fine with it as well. Um, I think the main condition we would have is that we don't want installed versions to deviate too much from Fedora, uh, the Fedora official image. I mean, we're this is what we're doing with Fedora Workstation with Lenovo. They, they don't deviate from our image much, if at all, aside from providing a few legal documents that they're required to ship on onto hardware. And I think we'd basically want the same kind of arrangement. Maybe we could talk about some other customizations. I don't know. But that's that's basically where I would see it would go for that. Nice, yeah. Uh, so last question for now. Is there a plan to make spins more visible on the website? So it says currently it's basically just one square surrounded by lots of others. So it's easy to miss it. Yeah, I, I think this is this is definitely something we should look at for when we when we redo the website. So like a lot of the work that we want to do to rejigger the branding, the websites, the marketing has been kind of holed up in the in the new Fedora logo that is still undergoing the legal process of getting trademark, getting the validations, getting all the crossing the T's, dotting the I's. I think with that we will probably also look at making spins and labs more prominent in some way. Um, I don't know explicitly how we're going to do it, but I think that we are definitely going to have to look at making this more visible and more prominent because it's unfair to the spins and the labs who put a lot of work into supporting their variants that they can't really get any users to see it unless they already know it's there, which is a horrible catch-22. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for the talk. Oh, in the chat, there was some back and forth about ButterFS. <laughs> uh, I've been it and been happy with it personally. <laughs> well, thank trying you. <laughs> yeah. So some people had bad experiences and burned their fingers. Uh, some love it. Oh, well, I guess time will tell how that goes. <laughs> thank you so much for your presentation. It was really fun. Yeah, thank you. It was my pleasure. Yeah, so applause in the chat. Yay. <laughs> Thanks, Neil. All yeah. right. We're staying uh, with our new updated schedule, 10 minutes behind. So we have about a six minute break now. Thank you so much. Yeah. It was my pleasure. Thank you all. <laughs>